In this last part of the problem, uh, we're going to add a little twist to this, and this is more going to be a conceptual uh, um, question, is uh, what happens whenever we ground this outer um, thick spherical shell right here? So if we just put a little grounding uh, symbol right here to signify that it's grounded, and uh, by the way, grounding just means that uh, if it, all these uh, electrons and all these charges have a way to kind of push charge away and out of here. So it's a way for it to either uh, push charges electrons away or pull electrons from a, a larger source. It kind of gives them a, an, an out right here. So if we put a grounding wire right here and uh, the charge stays the same right here, it's still going to pull the electrons. It's still going to pull a negative charge right here on the outer surface to try to counteract that positive charge right here on the inside. However, all of these uh, positive charges right here, they can be a, a neutralizer um, or have basically have a quote-unquote way out of this uh, whole place and it allows them to uh, have a way to escape or have electrons to come in here and try to neutralize these uh, positive charges because down here is like an infinite amount of uh, uh, negative charges that can come in right here. So what happens when you put a grounding wire is that there's going to be no net charge. It allows this outside to be um, all uh, neutral right here. So whenever you add this uh, new um, discharge, all these positive charges here go away. And so let me see if I can zoom in real quick and just take these positive charges away here. There we go, as best I can. And then zooming out. And what happens when there's no net positive charges on the outside right here, this electric field that's being caused by those positive charges that we had in the previous part of the problems, um, those go to zero. So we can just go ahead and just uh, uh, go ahead and take that away. But we still have an, um, these electric fields here. We still have an electric field from this positive charge pushing out. And we still have a negative charge from this electric field pushing in right here. And so going back to the actual uh, question, and I'll, I'll redo this question. Um, I'll just go ahead and put it all in red here. So this is all part C. Part C specifically asks us to revisit Oops, parts A, parts A and parts B with this newfound uh, change to the system here. So for part A, um, the uh, the electric, the, the surface charge at R, at R equals R, so on the surface here, it still st stays the same, so there's no, there's no change in that. Uh, the electric field, or the charge distribution on the inside here, stays the same because it still wants to, to kind of counteract and uh, neutralize that charge uh, here on the system, and there's an infinite amount of electrons it can pull from to try to uh, neutralize that, but it only pulls enough so it perfectly cancels out that charge that's there in the middle. So over here, this is actually still the same. Uh, but for this last part right here, the the charge uh, distribution on the outside right here, like I just said, it's going to be equal to, it's going to be neutralized because it's going to be able to pull electrons from down here to try to neutralize those positive charges that, that induced net positive charge that was uh, um, caused by pulling these uh, this negative charges towards to try to neutralize it. So this is actually going to actually be equal to zero right here. And now moving down to the part B with this newfound system that we have here, uh, everything essentially stays the same except for one piece, this piece right here. As I talked about, there's no electric field right here anymore. So the electric field, the, the E dot DL, the electric field right here, uh, that's actually going to be equal to zero because there's no net charge on the outside as we just described up here. So this whole interval goes to zero, which means that this portion goes to zero. Everything else stays the same, right? Because all the rest of the charge distribution stays the same. So if this stays zero, if we go ahead and walk down our problem here, that means that this was actually equal to zero here because there's no interval. And that means this one here doesn't exist. This turns into zero. And then this portion here turns to zero. So our answer just ends up being um, this portion right here, which I'll highlight just this and R my quantity of R minus A. And that's the last part of this problem here.